Hey there, revenge seekers and justice lovers. Welcome to a wild ride through some of the most outrageous payback tales you'll ever hear. Today, we're diving into five revenge stories so crazy and hilarious, they'll have you gasping and giggling in equal measure. From Harry Potter-related feuds to a dolphin serving karma, these tales prove that karma isn't just a concept, it's a comedic force of nature. Whether you're here for the jaw-dropping twists, the satisfaction satisfying justice, or just a good laugh, buckle up. These stories are about to show you just how far some people will go when they've been wronged. So sit back, hit that like button, and let's get started with our first unbelievable tale of sweet, sweet payback. One man waited 21 years to get his revenge. This guy waited 21 years to assassinate Michael O'Dwyer, Lieutenant Governor of Punjab. O'Dwyer was responsible for a massacre in 1919 in which as many as 1,500 Indians were killed. Utham didn't forget. He fled abroad and planned his revenge well. In the 1920s, Utham lived in America. He took a Mexican wife, Lupe, and had two sons. In 1927, he went to England and married an English woman. He lived a quiet life and kept to himself. Then, in 1940, he used his wife's name to purchase a ticket for an event in London at which O'Dwyer was said to appear. He wanted to crush the spirit of my people, so I have crushed him, yelled out Udham as he fired two fatal bullets. He wanted to crush the spirit of my people, so I have crushed him. Powerful words words from a powerful man. 21 years he waited for his vengeance. He married for it, lived across different continents for it, and obtained it at last. In 1940, Udham Singh was hanged the same year. He died defiantly, saying he was sad he couldn't take out more of his enemies. 2. J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter Revenge on Stephen Fry Just after the first Harry Potter book had been released, he was offered the role of narrating it for audiobooks. He hadn't read it and was simply told it was a children's book, so figured it would be an easy afternoon's work. When he met J.K. Rowling, she mentioned that she was writing a sequel. Stephen replied very condescendingly, Good for you. A few years down the line, the books are selling well, and he is doing the recording for The Prisoner of Azkaban when he runs into the phrase, Harry pocketed it. Stephen could not say this line. It always came out as, Harry pocketed it, unless he said it ridiculously slowly. A difficult phrase. Three words. Harry pocketed it. Still can't say it. Harry pocketed it. I keep... They tried time and time again to get it right, but to no avail. Eventually, he called up J.K. and asked if he could say, Harry put it in his pocket. Instead, she thought for a moment, then said, no, and hung up. The phrase, Harry pocketed it, appeared in the next four books. Get it? That's how it's done. Harry again, pocketed it. You can do it. You see, for, for some reason, I keep wanting to put in extra syllables. Harry pocketed it. Three. The Tale of Polaris Jack The story of the clever dolphin that helped vessels navigate the treacherous waters of the Cook Strait for 24 years is fun, and yet reads like a chilling tale of aquatic revenge. The Cook Strait that separates the North and South Islands of New Zealand is a notoriously deadly stretch of water, dominated by some of the most unforgiving, powerful tidal currents on record. And just beneath the treacherous surface lay stretches of sharp rocks and submerged ship-sinking reefs. But for 24 long years, this old dolphin diligently met and then escorted all the vessels that approached the danger zone. Like a pilot captain, he would head out to meet ships as they neared the hazardous stretch of water he called home. Then one day in 1904, some 14 years into the old dolphin's service, and Polaris Jack the dolphin that guides ships through the strait is famous, but... A newcomer on board the SS Penguin doesn't know this. He sets eyes on this beautiful and unusually large dolphin that was masterfully riding the bow wave. This newcomer quickly fetched his rifle and ran back onto the ship's deck before taking aim at the old dolphin and firing a shot. However, before he could confirm his trophy kill, and while his ears still rang, Strong hands attached to arms as like oak trees grabbed him and hurled him to the deck. The newcomer, who had taken that poorly aimed shot, had immediately been seized by burly superstitious sailors, angrily shouting and cursing him before being locked below decks for the remainder of the voyage. But fear not, Polaris Jack had survived his failed assassination attempt, and being the particularly cunning and intelligent dolphin that he was, old Jack remembered the only ship that ever shot at him, 
and never once guided SS Penguin through the treacherous Cook Strait again. Over the entire 24-year period that Pelorus Jack the pilot Dolphin had escorted vessels through the rough strait, only a single ship sank. You guessed it. The SS Penguin sank five years later in 1909, having struck submerged rocks while navigating the bitter Cook Strait, without being escorted by Pelorus Jack. A chilling tale of aquatic revenge. 4. A singer's revenge for his damaged guitar caused a company $180 million. David Carroll, a singer, was flying from Nova Scotia to Nebraska. At the time of luggage unloading, he noticed the unloaders were just throwing the luggage out. As soon as he landed and went to check his luggage, he discovered his $3,500 Taylor guitar's neck had been broken. Dave tried for nine months to get a claim processed with United. The response was always no. They said he had waited longer than 24 hours to process a claim. Dejected, he wrote a song and produced a music video. The song was titled United Breaks Guitars. He put it up on YouTube and it went viral. After 150,000 views on Song 1, United contacted Dave Carroll and offered payment to make the video go away. He had changed his mind by now. He told them that United Breaks Guitars wasn't just a single song. It was part of a trilogy. News media picks up the news. Soon newspapers and news broadcast media across America were doing stories about the song. He did over 200 interviews in the first few months. The BBC reported that United's stock price dropped by 10% within three to four weeks of the release of the video, a decrease in valuation of $180 million. Cause United breaks guitars. If you made it this far, thank you very much, and don't forget to press this button. Really helps this video reach a lot of people. And don't forget to subscribe for more interesting facts and mind-boggling stuff that happens in this crazy world of ours.